Hello everyone! Um, with all of the disruptions that have happened recently, I'm really excited to get this course back on track. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the online rendition of ESC 190. A few housekeeping notes before we start this first lecture. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is to set up an environment that you can program with on your own computer to complete the rest of this course. Uh, the way we strongly suggest that you do that is to set up a virtual machine on your computer. You can find the instructions for this in the ESC 190 handbook. If for whatever reason you find that the virtual machine is not working for you, we have outlined alternative measures in the announcement that we've sent and pinned on Discourse. So take a look at that, um, get you up to speed on how to set up a local environment for your programming. This ties in really well to the fact that Lab 4, without any changes, is due March 31st, okay? So we will be having lab sessions uh, online that you can ask the TAs questions, and we will also continue to have office hours. So those are the resources you have available for Lab 4. And the last thing I just want to highlight is that we have posted the project final report guidelines. So you can start working on that anytime now. Okay, so to get started, I um, want to start off with an exercise on pointers. Uh, this will be really useful for lab four. So I've created this skeleton here, the skeleton code, and we want to fill in the blanks essentially. So we've got a few blanks and I'll just highlight them with my um, pen here in green. I've got a few boxes that I want to fill in. So just go ahead and pause the video Fill these in and then you can come back and we'll take up the answers together. Okay, so now let's go in here and break down step by step what's happening on each line. The first thing that happens is that we have, we're claiming some amount of memory and in this case it, it's five times the size of an integer. So in this picture here, we've got five blocks of memory that's the size of an integer. We've got a pointer to this block of memory, so that's x, and x just takes the address of the first element in this block of memory, in this case, index 0. So this notation here means I'm creating a variable of type pointer to int. So this star here, this asterisk, represents that this variable x is of type pointer to int. Then malloc returns a pointer to the first element of the array that it allocates. So now we assign x to point to the first element of the array. Okay, in the second step, we say that some variable p is equal to x plus 2. Now we know that x is a pointer to an integer here. Adding 2 to x does pointer arithmetic, so we go x plus 1 here, x plus 2 here. So this is in fact x plus 2. Now if we assign p to be equal to the value x plus 2, this means that p is also an address pointing to the one, in this case the third element of the array, using index 2. So if p is pointing to an element of the array, and the array is containing things of type int, that means that p itself is also a pointer to an integer. So we have int star p, p is a pointer to an integer, and it gets the value of the address x, pointer arithmetic plus 2. Done. Okay, in the next line, I've indicated that something p equals to 12. Using this figure here, we see that at index 2, we store the value 12. Now what I'm doing is I'm trying to dereference the pointer, meaning I go into the address of the pointer and I store something in there. The dereference operator, and this is a little bit confusing because it's also an asterisk, this is different. This is not an initialization of p. We did the initialization in line 2, where we did int star p, but in line 3 we're saying 
go to the address that P holds. P contains this number. Go to that address and take whatever's in there and set it to 12. So in this case, we dereference P, set it to 12, and we modify this array. So this is equivalent to if I did star or dereference x plus 2 equals to 12, or alternatively, I could do x square bracket 2 equals to 12. Okay, and the last part is I address P and I assign the address of P to Q. Now if P, P is a pointer to an integer. If I write that out, P is a pointer to integer. And Q is a pointer, I'm gonna abbreviate that as PTR to P. Then if you think of it sort of like a composition of functions, then Q is a pointer to pointer to integer. So it's a pointer to pointer to integer. Now you'll notice that if this is our entire main function, we're actually lacking something right now. This is not proper memory practices because at the end of this, we did not free the memory that we allocated. So somewhere at the end, I should actually write free x. Now I cannot write free p because p points to a position in this array that is not a pointer returned by malloc. You can only free something that was returned by malloc. So malloc, in fact, returns a pointer here, assigns it to x, and so we can free x. But p was never returned by malloc. So that ends our little pointers exercise. Okay, now that we're done with, let's move on to structs. Now, I've created this struct, struct my struct, and it contains members foo and bar. Okay, so we can only initialize members um, without values. You can't actually preset foo to be 10 and bar to 20. C does not let you do that. Um, so how do we work with this? Let's take a look. The first case is if I initialize a struct, so struct my struct A, and I set its members to one and two. So in this case here, we've got foo is one, and bar is two. Now the way that we then access foo and bar when we initialize this way, is we have to access it using this dot, a dot foo whatever, this, this stuff on the right-hand side is not actually important, but you, sh you see that we access using the dot operator. Okay, so this is similar to what we've seen in Python, but there's another way we can initialize a struct, and that is by initializing a pointer to struct. So now I create a struct, my struct, star. So B is a pointer to a struct, and I allocate some memory for that, and then I set its, I initialize its members using this arrow operator. So that would be on your keyboard, the minus um, triangle bracket keys. Now this is only applied when B is a pointer to a struct. And in a picture, this is how it works out. A is, this chunk of memory is called A. Whereas when we initialize it using a pointer, B is actually the address of the beginning of the struct. So these two sections, we're building up to a little tutorial on how to tackle lab four. I hope you've all had a chance to read it. If not, I would recommend you start reading sooner rather than later. Okay, so getting started on lab four, um, I wanted to work on the function create hash table. And create hash table strongly depends on this struct here, hash table, the struct hash table, which has members, num buckets, num keys, uh, and a pointer to pointer to node buckets, and also a mode. You can read the description of all of this in the lab document. I'm not going to go over that, um, but let's take a look. 
Okay, so what are the things that we want to do in this create hash table function? Uh, well, I had a few questions that I wanted you to answer. So take a minute, pause the video and answer these questions. The first is, how many buckets are you going to initialize based on the inputs to create hash table? And then the second step is you have to initialize buckets based on step one. So how will you initialize those buckets? And then the third question, and this one is the most trivial, is how would you initialize the other struct members? So pause the video and then we'll come back and take it up. Okay, so after thinking about those questions, I sketched out the function and I decided to first create the table pointer, the hash table pointer that I need to return. You see here that the return is of type hash table pointer. So I create that hash table pointer, I call it table, and I allocate some memory for it. Then I know that the number of buckets is going to be 2 to the power of m, which I pass in. Now, mode is trivial, I just set up the mode to be mode, but we haven't addressed yet how to fill in the buckets. So all I've done so far is I've created this thing. Okay, that's my table, hash table pointer, which points to a struct. And inside the struct, I've got num buckets, okay, whatever. And then I've got num keys. And I've got buckets and mode. But right now, this is all filled with garbage. It's only actually carved out the space and memory that I need for each of these items, for each of these members. It doesn't actually contain any useful information until I set it up like here and here. So our buckets is still garbage. So with this diagram, I want to figure out how to get in order the buckets member of the struct, right? Well, if I want to get this buckets member of the struct working, Let's draw a picture of what this looks like. And reading the description in the struct, we're told that this buckets thing is a pointer to an array of node pointers. Drawing this out, I get that this is a pointer to array of node pointers. So in each bucket that I initialize, I have one node pointer. So in the zero it, index, I have one node pointer. In the first index, I have a node pointer, all the way up to num buckets, minus one for the indexing, but this should give you an idea of how to get started.